Hey all, I'm Paul Reese, an engineer with the developer relations team on Google ML, and this is the ML on Raspberry Pi with MediaPipe series, where you will learn about the basics of machine learning, along with how you can use Google's newest on-device machine learning tool, MediaPipe, to add useful features to your own Raspberry Pi apps. In this video, we're going to take a look at gesture recognition, a task that uses computer vision to identify hands and categorize gestures being made. We'll start by learning some of the theory behind gesture recognition, then move on to how you can create your own Raspberry Pi Python app using MediaPipe for recognizing static hand gestures. So let's go ahead and get started. Like some of our other tasks, gesture recognition is implemented through MediaPipe using a bundle containing multiple models. Because of the way MediaPipe task is designed, these models can be chained together to do even more complex operations. To give you a better idea, gesture recognition consists of four separate models. The first detects the presence and location of a hand, the second finds specific landmarks on the hand, such as fingertips and various joints. The third does something called vector embedding, where it tries to match those landmarks up to different patterns and numerical values, though that isn't super important for this discussion. And the fourth performs the primary step of determining the gesture. Despite the number of steps involved, MediaPipe Task wraps these all up for you in a simple image in, data out format, so you can add this really cool feature set to your Raspberry Pi programs without worrying about a lot of the underlying details. For this video, I'm gonna use a default gesture classification model that we have already built and tested for our developer community, which gives you easy access to gestures, including thumbs up, thumbs down, closed fist, and open palm. If you're interested in training your own model for custom gestures, I've included a link to another video from our Android series in the description below that will cover exactly how to do this for the game Rock, Paper, Scissors. Now, let's switch over to the Raspberry Pi and start making something with gesture recognition. Similar to the other videos in this series, I'm gonna focus on the parts here that are important for performing recognition. But if you wanna see an entire example project, you can find the GitHub link for our official gesture recognition sample below. Along with that, rather than just showing the detected gesture on the screen, I've put together a small sample that controls two motors that are attached to one another in order to control a wide range of movement through gestures. While I'm only moving motors for this example, you could easily use the same concepts for something like a basic robotics project or simply attach a laser pointer to build a new cat toy. While this isn't something too fancy, it is something that I had fun with, so I'm hoping you all enjoy it too. If this is something that you would like to see more of in our video series, or if there are any particular kinds of projects you would like to see as either a video or a written guide, definitely let us know in the comments because I do look at those after these videos have been published to see what questions people have, what I can do to improve in the future, and what sorts of content people really enjoy the most. Just like with the other Raspberry Pi MediaPipe examples, you will first need to make sure you are running a 64-bit version of the Raspberry Pi OS, as well as have a camera installed. After that, you will need the MediaPipe Python dependency installed on your device. You will also need to make sure that you have an appropriate model stored on your device. There's a variety of ways you can do this, including using the wgit command from the terminal that you can see here to get a stock model that has been tested already. Since I'm not using a custom model for this example, I'll use this exact command to retrieve the model to the same directory as my Python script. Now, let's get into a new Python file you'll need to make sure you import this set of dependencies specifically for gesture recognition with MediaPipe. After you have those, you can initialize your gesture recognizer with a set of configuration options objects. The first options object contains a few general properties that are available to all of the tasks under MediaPipe. In this example, you will just set the path for the model that you're using. The second object contains properties that are relevant to the current specific task. In this example, I'm only setting the running mode to live stream because this is gonna use the camera to consistently recognize against a video stream and a callback where the results will be sent because this task will happen asynchronously so it doesn't block the main thread while inference is happening. After you have your options objects configured the way that you want for your app, you can create the gesture recognizer that will do the majority of the ML work for you. In addition to the values that you can include with the options object, you can also set the number of hands that you wanna support recognition on, the minimum hand detection confidence that must be met before the second and third models are run in this pipeline, and the presence and tracking confidence score thresholds, which are two more values specifically meant for optimizing runtimes when the likelihood of a successful recognition isn't as high as you might like. From there, you can read in each camera frame, 
If you're using the default model bundle provided by the MediaPipe team, then you will also want to make sure that your image is converted into an RGB format before being converted to a MediaPipe image object. With your image formatted and converted, you can call the recognize async method to start performing inference. When that's done, it will return a results object to you in the callback that you can use to do whatever it is you're going to do in your application. In this case, I'm controlling a pair of motors that I mentioned earlier with the gestures of thumbs up, thumbs down, open hand, and close fist, setting each gesture to a specific motor location. To do your own additions with gesture recognition, you can see the model result structure here. This will return the handedness of the image, or how confident the model is that a person is holding up either their left or right hand, a list of gestures along with the confidence score for that recognition, and a list of 21 landmarks on the hand that were used to recognize those gestures, including each fingertip, joint, and the base of the palm. What's interesting about these landmarks is that you get two different sets of information about them. The basic landmarks category is related directly to the image that was used for inference. The X and Y coordinates are normalized from 0, 0.0 to 1.0 based on the image's height and width, and the Z coordinates represent the landmark depth, with the origin point being the wrist landmark. Basically, this means that the smaller the Z value, the closer the model thinks the landmark is to the camera, with the Z value scaling at roughly the same magnitude as X. Rule landmarks are a little more tricky, but might be useful for whatever it is that you're working on. These basically treat the X, Y, and Z coordinates as real-world 3D coordinates measured in meters from the hand's geometric center. Cool, so that's it. Like always, we're excited to see all the cool things you make, so please share them with us online and in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.